Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. We've got an extra special show lined up tonight. Uh, we've got Will McClure, our first mate from our 39 hour trips and deep water specialist in studio with us tonight to be talking all about those deep water gag grouper and amberjack. So we have a very special show lined up. Stay tuned. We're going to get going live on Facebook. We're going to get this thing started here in another five minutes or so. Happy Sunday night, guys. Captain Dylan Hubbard and Will McClure. How you doing, Will? Pretty good, pretty good. So we got our special Sunday night show lined up for you guys tonight. We are giving away tons of free trips, over a thousand dollars in free fishing trips tonight to celebrate Will being on the show and celebrate our slowdown. We have officially slowed down on the backside of Red Snapper season. We got tons of room on our trips and uh, we're ready to get you guys out in the water. If you wanted a light load, you don't like the full Red Snapper trips, it's a great time to get out there and go do it now behind that busy red snapper season. We had 25 people on our opening Amberjack trip, and uh, the very next trip is very light as well. So tons of great trips, great options, and great fishing coming up. Tonight we're going to be talking all about what we've been catching, how we've been catching it, we're going to be showing you photos and videos of what we've been catching. And then we're going to be answering your questions, comments, concerns. And we're going to be giving away free fishing trips. That's right. We've got two free 39-hour trips tonight. We've got a 10-hour all-day trip for two and a 5-hour half-day trip for two. So lots of crazy free trips tonight. Plus all the crazy fishing comments questions that you have we're going to be answering those guys so definitely stay tuned sit back relax grab your drinks and uh, get ready for a great show how about you will you ready man i'm ready yeah you're going to be sharing all those secrets tonight i know you got a lot of them hidden up there i've got a few jack secrets <laughs> and gag groupers so stay tuned guys it's definitely going to be a good show tonight got lots of cool photos and videos lined up for y'all we're going to get started here in about three minutes we just need a few minutes to get uh some more people watching and uh share this around don't forget to comment where you're watching from uh don't forget to like us on facebook instagram and subscribe to us on youtube don't forget to tell your friends and share the stream share the video on your uh on your Facebook timeline or in your favorite fishing club and uh, make sure everybody knows because we want to share the wealth here guys we got a lot of free stuff to give away tonight and uh, we want everybody to have a chance to win so make sure in order to win those free trips guys you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page so if you're watching on another fishing club or someone's timeline you do have to go to the hubbard's marina facebook page and from the hubbard's marina facebook page find that video comment at least one time on the video and that's what makes you eligible to win these free fishing trips guys if you don't comment on the hubbard's marina facebook page you will not be eligible to win now if you are picked as a winner then you must message or email the Hubbard's Marina page. So you can message the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, or you can email me at info, I-N-F-O, uh, at hubbardsmarina.com, and that will also uh, work. But you got to message or email us quickly because we want only those of you who are watching the show live to have a chance to win. So that's why we do that. So when we pick a winner... If you, as long as you message us within about 10 minutes or so, that means you were watching live and uh, you caught the chance uh, to win. So make sure you comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page and uh, that makes you eligible to win. Unfortunately, due to software issues, we cannot pick the random winners from YouTube. So it's only on Facebook. And Instagram doesn't allow us to stream uh, to that yet, but we are working on that. Uh, so to answer your question over there, uh, Keith Taylor, unfortunately, it's Facebook only. 
But we do have lots of great fishing tips and tricks. So even if you're not eligible to win free trips, we are going to give away a lot of free information and uh, free tips and a lot more. So definitely stay tuned. It's going to be a great night. Got a great Sunday night show lined up for y'all. Will and I are going to be answering your questions, showing you photos, talking about all those overnighters. Will, how many overnighters have you ran in the last two months? I just got back from my 27th trip right now. 27 39-hour trips in what, like 61 days? And something like that, and finally get a week off right here. <laughs> and after that 61 days of 39-hour trips back to back to back, the season closed and you went right back out on another one. Yeah, so I didn't really count the end of the season until <laughs> right now today. <laughs> At least you got about four days off, five days off. You're going to have some time to spend with your family here and uh, sit back and relax, huh? Yeah, I'm going to have a, a good, relaxing week this week and get back at it next weekend. Yep, yep. We got a lot of 39-hour trips lined up here for the month of August to celebrate those amberjack. And we got a lot of great fish coming up. So we're going to get this thing started up here. And uh, we're going to start it off looking through some of these photos of what we've been catching and uh, let's get this thing rolling. I hope you guys have your drinks ready. I hope you've commented where you're watching from. You've liked the video. You've thumbed, thumbs up the video on uh, YouTube and liked it on Facebook and uh, shared it with your friends because it is time. How you doing, guys? Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. And we got Will. How you doing, Will? Pretty good, pretty good. Yes, sir. So we are ready to answer your questions, comments, concerns. And uh, we're ready to uh, talk fishing. Hopefully you guys are ready as well. So let's jump right into this thing and uh, show you some photos of what's been going on here. So here are some of those big amberjack. We've been catching some monster amberjack to start off the season. It's been really unique, man. I feel like we've uh, kind of started off with a bang with these big jacks. Yeah, we, we did surprisingly well on the big jacks. I feel like the restrictions have made these jacks grow up a little bit where we didn't get 50 jacks on the boat, but the ones we caught were 40 Monster. plus pounds yeah yeah and uh, then even on the flying hub two as you see or flying hub one there they got some big jacks and uh we're not getting the numbers or we did we got 20 to 25 this trip but uh, all nice nice fish yeah definitely the numbers the mass the big huge biomass of fish isn't here quite yet we're not getting on huge piles of these amber jack they're not jumping in the boat but what we are finding are really, really big jacks. And for us to land as many as we did, we lost a bunch. We probably lost as many as we caught. Those big fish, you gotta, you gotta do everything right with them, and uh, set your drag right, and everything has to go right for you to land a jack forty plus pounds. So, what do you mean by setting your jag right? Uh, not too tight and not too loose. There's a fine line there. <laughs> yeah, so you want to make sure, essentially, you don't want it locked down because then he can break you off. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah, he can just snap it. And I saw one this last trip that a guy had on, and it was just smoking him and smoking him. And I think it got around some structure down there and broke him off. They can do that to you, too. Yeah, they're smart fish. They, I mean, they don't get that big for no reason. They've been around the block once or twice. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want it locked down, but you don't want it too loose to where he's able to run you around, huh? Yeah, especially on the big boat. Now, the, on the charter boat, the flying hub one or two, you can let him run around a little bit more because there's not as many lines in the water. But yeah. on the big boat, you got to have your drag set relatively tight where you can manage that fish and get him to the boat a little bit quicker than if you had your drag set loose. Yeah, and I, I feel like uh, what I like to do is I'll start... Uh, with my rod, like for example, my big nine knot, I'll uh, lock that thing down pretty tight and I'll wrap that line around my hand once or twice and I'll pull on it. And if I can pull on it and pull some drag out of it, but my hand is, you can see the dents from the line, like you had to work to pull yeah. that line out. I feel like that's a good starting spot. And uh, I, I want to make sure that that fish can pull some line. If I hook one and he's not able to really pull drag, I might even back it off a little bit. But then if I get one and he's smoking me and I feel like he's going to tangle me up or run me to the bottom, that's when I start kind of slowly tightening it up. Yeah. You don't have to start with it way tight or way loose. You can even snap him off if you have it too tight to start with. You can break him off in the first 30 seconds of the fight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a 
very fine line there with the amberjack drag. Would you say it's something that you can just like you 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 go up to a customer's rod and reel and you and you set it for them, or is that something that you got to each reel is a little different? I and I could do it for you, yes, but each reel is a little different. And with the with the new nice reels these days, uh, the drag is a lot better than it used to be. So yeah. uh, it's not as uh, shaky and yes, yeah. you know they don't it doesn't come out. It's, it come, it's a much smoother drag these days than there used to be. I think what you're talking about is those newer high end reels like the Shimano Talicas, the Daiwa Saltigas, the Accurates, the Avets. They have these crazy awesome really unique drag setups to where it's super smooth like that saltiga that i have is like butter i mean it's crazy yeah and the old daiwa 900h or the pen 9 on that thing starts screaming drag you can feel it kind of jump a little bit and that's what you're talking about yeah that's what i'm speaking about like we had a guy out there at this trip with a really nice rod and reel set up just for jacks and uh, he caught a couple of big ones one of them i asked him if i thought if he thought it was a keeper and it was probably 45 or 50 pounds when he got <laughs> in the boat. Just because his reel was so big? Are yeah. you talking about that uh, Shimano Tiagra 130? No, it wasn't even that one. It was it was another. I didn't notice what it was, but it was a very nice setup. And the guy Dang. just bossed one in. <laughs> you didn't know if it was a keeper and it ended up being 45 pounds. Yeah, at least Holy 45 moly. pounds. That's how you know he's making it look easy. Yeah, he made it look easy. <laughs> Easier than I would have. Yeah, man. And those rods, the rods make a difference. Like those uh, Bull Bay uh, custom Hubbard's Marina rods we have, that thing is so light. I mean, I have a 9 out reel on it, and it's still a light combo. Mm -hmm. And it makes it really, really easy to feel that bait, feel that hookup. And then once you have the fish, it's strong enough to handle it, too. Yeah. It's crazy, the combo combinations that you're able to make now with these huge reels and these super light but yet super strong rods definitely when you stop by the marina you want to check out that new line of rods but let's get back into those photos i got distracted by these big old beautiful amberjack we're going to answer your questions guys i know a lot of you guys are popping in questions here i appreciate it we're going to get to the questions after we get through the photos and uh we're going to talk more about what you all want to hear as well but as we go through those photos i always like to kind of talk about how we catch these fish and with these big amberjack big bait big tackle big bait big tackle and uh a little bit of luck and that makes sure you catch that big fish Look at that guy. Oh, yeah. We don't see too many of those. Yeah. You guys know what that is? Someone comment. See if we got anybody watching who knows what that thing is. They're good eating. That is not a red snapper. A uh, very, very cool fish. We'll get back to that if no one comments the answer. Got some big sharks. We've been fishing out deep. Uh, for those amberjack, for those uh, gags, for those scamp, we fish real, real deep. And uh, out deep, we, fun we run into a lot of these sharks, especially on the amberjack spots, the springs, the that kind of stuff, the big wrecks. That's where we run into these sharks. You know what kind of shark that is? Uh, not off the top of my head. One was a dusky for sure that yeah. we caught. Uh, I just saw huge fins. That might have been the one you see the size of that uh that, pectoral fin yeah that is a big pectoral well i feel like we've been running into a lot more dusky sharks lately mm -hmm. like when i was a kid we didn't really see too many duskies and they were originally i think on the endangered species list yeah they probably worked they have huge fins so they probably were fished down for their uh fins. For their fins but he almost looks like he has some spots on him that's an odd looking shark yeah, right there it almost looks like a tiger shark that's but what he's I was got spawns too. Yeah. too very unique fish Sharks are hard to identify. People send me photos of sharks all the time, like, hey, man, what do you think this is? And I'm like, a lemon? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's tough. Sharks it is, are tough. Yes. But we've been seeing a lot of uh, pelagic action out there. The pelagic action's been a little hit and miss. These are some nice blackfin tunas uh, from the 12-hour extreme trip on the Flying Hub 2. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of pelagic action out there overall, but it seems like one trip where we'll have some tuna, some kingfish, maybe a wahoo, and then the next trip is nothing. Yeah, it, it does happen like that, but you got to be fishing for these kind of fish to catch them for yeah. the most part. You get an incidental tuna or kingfish on the way down, but you don't really catch a wahoo unless you're fishing for a wahoo. You're fishing for kingfish at least, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you got to be trolling to catch one, and uh, we've had a decent trolling uh, showing this year. Last trip, we trolled up a couple of amberjacks. I'm sure we'll get into that, but... Uh, 
Yeah, you got to be doing it. You got to be trolling or fishing top water or something like that to catch these fish. Generally, in some trips we do, and some trips we don't. You know. No, those blackfin tuna. I feel like you can flatline for them. You can troll for them. You can catch them on a vertical jig. In your 15 plus years experience on the 39 hour trip, what would you say if you wanted to catch? If you had a guy that said, "Will the only thing I want to do this trip is catch a blackfin," what would be your advice to him uh i would be it's generally at nighttime on a 39 hour at least it's generally at nighttime yeah. and a lot of times it's when you've been fishing at a spot longer than a few minutes where chums had time to settle in the water and then the best bait for me is a lightweight and a pin fish or a pig fish Ooh. decent sized pin or pig fish and just slowly let him go down to the bottom if he sits on top they don't bite him as well on top huh so you're talking about a knocker rig, essentially. Yeah, a lighter weight knocker rig where it just slowly guides that fish to the bottom. Okay. And he sees it going down like with the chum, you know, or whatever it happens. But if it's right on the surface, it doesn't seem like he bites it as well. Would you would you tail hook that pig fish or pig fish or put it up underneath the nose? If it was a pig fish, I generally hook him in the tail because he'll swim down to the bottom. But a pin fish, sometimes he'll fight that weight. So I like to hook a pin fish in the nose okay. at that time get them to go down to the bottom yeah to get and so to you're waiting for a spot that you've been fishing for a while so you get that natural chum slick going you have guys catching fish and that those fish as they come up they're regurgitating bait and you have guys missing fish so it's kind of getting that smell going in the water yep and you've been fishing a night spot like some of those 39 hours when you get on a good bite you'll fish a spot sometimes for an hour or maybe yeah, even more. Longer. Yeah, two hours even. Yeah. yeah. My dad's record was eight and a half hours. He's real happy about that. Yeah, he is. Real happy about that. But yeah, I mean, when you're fishing these spots on a party boat for long periods of time like that, you get a lot of chum slick going. And that chum slick attracts a lot of these pelagic fish. And those pelagic fish swim up that chum line. So what Will's saying is you're dropping that knocker rig back. So you're using like a spinning rod. Yeah, spinning rod or light, you know, light set, lighter setup braid with a little top shot on there. Yeah. And uh, like wire a, if there's kingfish around just so you don't get cut off. And the tuna will still bite a light kingfish wire. Like a, a number four, number three? Yeah, something like that. And uh, generally I don't fish a wire, but if there are kingfish around or you got cut off once, then I go immediately put a little short shot of wire on there. Yeah, because if you're targeting tuna, you don't want to use wire. No, not yeah. generally. Yeah, and then as far as your hook size for those tuna, about five aught, mm -hmm. five aught hook, and you would go circle hook since you're knocker rigging, right? Yeah, I do well on the tunas with circle hooks. It generally gets them in the corner of the mouth. Yeah, and uh, they got those hard mouths anyway. Yeah, and if you just set your drag right with the tuna, you want him to be away from the boat generally. Yeah, and because uh, he can wreak some havoc up underneath the boat. <laughs> so you you drag you set your drag for like twenty five thirty percent drag. You want him to let it you want to let him run before he uh yeah if you get a top water fish it. bite yeah top water fish bite let him run your best bet is to get him as far away from the boat as possible to start with yeah let him wear out and then get him back towards the boat mm. That's, and it happens both ways sometimes you can't help it sometimes yeah. he goes under the boat you know and i i've, I've uh, seen Smokey do that and Smokey talked about that when he's kingfishing in the spring and fall when he hooks a kingfish on a flat line he'll almost free spool it and let him run with that live bait let him eat it so that way he's further away from the boat, and then he puts it in gear and sets that hook. So that way that fish is 50, 60, 70, 100 yards from the boat before he actually sets the hook. So Smokey might have taught me that. Yeah. <laughs> so that, Smokey's a smart guy. Yeah. So the idea is for that fish to get tired out away from the boat. So that way when he's doing those circles and those somersaults, he's not tangling up with other people is that yeah. what you're saying yes and especially those uh pelagic fish you can lose them really easily once they start getting tangled up with people because they're fast mm -hmm. and uh and they're jerky jerky yeah you yeah. can lose fish very easily especially the pelagics mm -hmm. once they start getting tangled up with people we lost a big mahi this season the big it would have been the biggest one of the season a big bull oh really uh, due to tangles yeah man that stinks <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, light knocker rig. So you're using braided line typically with the short, like maybe 10 feet top shot, even less. Yeah, uh, 5 to 15 foot, you know. Yeah, so short top shot, 5-aught hook. You're talking like 40, 50-pound top shot. 
floral card. Definitely not over 50. Yeah, so you want light tackle. Because mm -hmm. those tuna, they're smart. They're leader shy. Even though it's nighttime, it's dark out, they can feel that line. Yeah, they don't like 60-pound tests. They'll bite it occasionally, but you don't see many of them. It's usually that one where you're dropping down to the bottom and that bait's just flashing in front of him and he hits it. That's when he'll bite 60-pound test on a reaction bite, you know. Okay, okay. And then when you're using a knocker rig offshore, typically like three-quarter ounce, one ounce, one and a half, Kind of depends on how many people are on the boat, right? Yeah, people, current, and uh, not even current. If it's a three or four foot seas out there, which is fine fishing weather, but the wind's blowing a little bit, it's harder to feel your yeah. bait. Then I go a little bit heavier weight on the knocker rig. Yeah. So the idea with the knocker rig is that egg sinker is right to the hook, and that egg sinker has nothing impeding it. So as that egg sinker gets further from the hook, because that bait has hydrodynamic drag, so as the bait's dragging the bottom, that weight is getting further and further from the hook. And as it separates from the hook, the bait's descending slower, right? And it just points that bait in the right direction and gets him going down. Yeah, and so as it's slowly falling through the chum line, that tuna will come up and smack it. And a lot, yeah, and a lot of times with the tuna too, I don't just throw it out and let it sit there. I throw it out and keep feeding it out. Okay. And if it gets down too far, you think, reel it in, throw it back out and try it one more time. Then maybe let it sit there. Okay. You know, okay. but a lot of times he wants to see it going down to the bottom. And it, and you want don't want it on the surface. You want it heading towards the bottom. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So some good tuna tips there from uh, the old expert over here. Uh, so let's get back into these photos. Now, these are daytime blackfin tunas caught on a flat line. On the Flying Hub 2, Captain Anthony likes using a dead thread fin, just tossing it out there. If he sees the tuna, he won't have wire on it, but generally he's got wire on that flat line for those kingfish, possibly a wahoo. Uh, he really likes hunting those wahoo. He got that one big wahoo, and he's got wahoo fever. Yeah, he does. He does. He's, he's got some big ones under his belt, though. He catches some nice fish. And these are some nice blackfin tuna from that Flying Hub 2 12-hour extreme. And bam, there's some nice gas. Yes, sir. Yeah, they get a little bit different tuna bite on that boat than we do on ours. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. They can kind of find those schools and follow them around a little bit easier. A little bit more nimble on that smaller, faster boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that radar, they're able to run around. Because, like, on the Florida, if we see a, uh, some action on the radar 10, 12 miles away, that that's... That's an hour run, you know? Yeah, we're not going over there. Yeah, whereas the Flying Hub 2, you can run over there in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Flying Hub 2 definitely has a lot more flexibility to chase some of that top water action, some of that unique fishing that we run into offshore. Now, these gags, we've been catching some nice gags. I mean, in my opinion, for how hot the water's been and for the time of year, we've been doing really well on the gags. Yeah, there's been gags here and there. And if you fish for them, you'll get a couple bites, whether you land that fish or not. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, th especially those big ones, like we've got a few on the 39s. Anthony's got a few on the uh, Flying Hub, too. You don't land all of those. No, no. These gags are tricky. Even if you know what you're doing, like to me, like amp, like mangrove snapper fishing is one of my favorite because mangrove snapper fishing, it really it, to me it separates the inexperienced angler from the experienced angler really fast. If you can catch mangrove snapper consistently, catch them often. I feel like that's the most experienced dude who knows what he's doing on the boat. Do you yeah, agree? I agree. They they are tricky to catch. And and in my fishing seminar on the boat now, I've basically specified mm -hmm. that I'm going to teach you guys how to catch mangroves. And the rest of the fishing will come, but, but the, because the mangrove is the trickiest part of the fishing. And I agree completely, and I say that a lot in my seminars, is once you can master mangrove snapper and catch them consistently and catch them often, that that skill, that experience transfers to you'll almost get any bite. bite fish. Yeah, you'll get the other bites. Yeah, while you're targeting those mangroves, you're going to catch gags. Mm -hmm. Now mangrove snapper you can catch consistently catch them often catching gag grouper consistently and often is a whole nother story because i can get mangrove snapper and i can catch them consistent and often i can hook gag grouper consistently <laughs> but pulling them into the boat even if you've got the right tackle the high-end gear you're using the right uh setup you're using everything and doing everything right. You just sometimes just plain have to get lucky. Yeah, some of those big fish are lucky. I think I hooked three of them this red snapper season and did not land any of those three. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got a lot of big fish under your belt. you got that 52-pound yeah. uh, black grouper. 
Uh, you've you've got a forty pound gag, a thirty pound gag, in yeah. many in the twenties. Yeah, yeah, and, you've uh, got plenty of big fish under your belt. But I, I, I really honestly feel like those twenty, thirty, even especially forty pound gags. That's just a little bit of dumb luck. Yeah, you get you get lucky with one of those, and they don't bite every trip either. But and yeah. to catch one too, that's a, almost a fish of a lifetime. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can hook them; they can be under the boat. You can hook them all day long, and it's so funny, like especially in November, December, people come out gag fishing and they'll hook a ton of gags. Like, especially on the flying hub too. I see it a lot. Like I'll ask Anthony, Hey, how'd you do today? Well, we hooked a bunch, but he might have 12 gags on the table, but Mm -hmm. you probably caught maybe 60, 70 gags, Mm -hmm. but you only landed 12 because they're that difficult to get up out of the bottom. It's crazy, man. Yeah. They are hard fighting fish. And those big gags, like when you catch a 25, 30 pound gag, most of the time he's got like three or four other hooks in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big black I caught had a gill hanging out of his mouth. Like one of his gills was broken off from either a spear or a a previous fight, you know? Wow. That 52 pound blackie you're talking about? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Tell that story. I want to hear it again. Uh, That was knocker rig, live bait. That was a knocker rig? Yep. Uh, I thought we had, I thought you had a huge live bait on a nine on. And I did. Oh, I, you were fishing for rigging. jacks. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, we had some kids on the boat. I let them reel in a few fish. Yeah. And uh, finally, I had a few amber jacks, and I was like, "All right, I'm going to reel this one in the next one." And I had no idea it was a grouper the whole time. And, uh, and then finally, at the end of the fight, I was like, "Man, this one didn't fight that much." And <laughs> it came up. I think it was a 56 pound. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. 52. <laughs> Fifty six point four, you mean? Yeah, something like that. Point four two six. And point four two six. And so I, I remember starting yelling, and Joe, uh, Joe thought I was injured. I was yelling so loud. Joe was the deckhand, Captain Joe. That is hilarious. And he came up and gaffed him and brought him in the boat. Oh man. So you were ga- you were uh, jack fishing, and you thought it was an amberjack. Yep, jack fishing in either August or September coming up right I think now. It, I think it was late August. It was August, yeah, yeah. So you guys got a shot at one of those out there on those jack spots coming up. Let me let me see why you're why you're telling that story. Let me see if I can find it. Sometimes I can na- I name them in my files, and I get lucky and I'm able to find it. Black grouper. We'll see. If we can find this photo, it's it was a truly crazy, crazy fish. Uh, and uh, it was a beautiful one, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't catch many black grouper, true black grouper. And I, I would not not have caught it had I not been fishing with a 9 alt and a 130-pound test. Yeah. And for, a 10 for, alt uh, Gamagatsu. For, yeah. yeah, for Jack's. <laughs> that's pretty cool i couldn't find the photo but sorry yes, it was a nice fish <laughs> it was a nice fish will's got it framed in his house i'm sure mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure we printed it out for you but yeah some more big gag grouper from the flying hub too we're seeing some nice red grouper here and there the red grouper have been tough this year man the red grouper bites definitely down uh the last one of the last week trips, we went a little bit further south than we have been on the 39, and we mm-hmm. did well on the red grouper. And uh, so maybe we'll end up out there during this jack season. It's a little closer to the elbow where maybe we could fish the jacks on the elbow than slide out there. But in our southern area, we did decent one one trip last week on the red groupers, maybe 15 or 20 red groupers. We didn't, Dylan wasn't there in the morning, didn't post the pile, but we had a, a decent catch on red grouper last week. Oh, nice. Yeah, we've been seeing a few and. Here's the end of our red snapper season. We got a few fat boys here. Didn't share a lot of these red snapper photos, but I wanted to show a few of the big ones before we uh, closed out the red snapper photos for the year. We've been seeing some nice scamp, and scamp are underrated, man. This thing, I would take this five, six pound scamp over a 20 pound gag all day. Oh yeah, that is a very, very good eating firm meat. Oh man, just so clean, white Mm. meat flaky it's making me hungry looking at it oh yeah they are very very good eating (laughs) yeah i love me some scamp grouper that's definitely up there in my top favorite eating fish pretty high up on the list too and they'll bite a variety of baits too they don't yeah they'll jig squid yeah i feel like a small pin fish small pin fish yeah that's my favorite go-to small pin fish like 60 pound 50 pound test 
that's my go-to but you're right like a, a four ounce hammered silver diamond jig that's the best i've ever done on scamp uh, yeah i think i may have been there for that yeah yeah, yeah i caught a couple in a row just may, dropping no, maybe this. not but yeah maybe maybe we're just remembering <laughs> <laughs> but uh a small diamond jig small pinfish and then a strip of squid like will was saying those little four six inch strips of squid they love those too or the small squid Oh, like a whole squid the you're whole talking squid, about? Yep. Oh, a small whole squid, like a like a little four to six incher you're talking yep, about? Yep, yep. Okay. A calamari. A calamari. Out deep, though, those scamp are 180, 200, even we, deeper. Yeah, we catch like 16 to 20 inch ones in the 120 foot range, but the big ones are out there 150 plus. You yeah. Know. The biggest scamp I ever caught, we were on the Flying Hub 2 for the shakedown trip. Like one of the first trips that we ran on the Flying Hub 2 before it was wrapped, before it was Coast Guard inspected, we were fishing like 450 foot of water. Uh, and we, I caught the scamp, man. It had to be like 28 inches. It was huge. Oh, yeah. It was like 14 pounds, I think. And man, that was the best eating. Whew. I love me some scamp. That is one I've never called a, a big scamp. Maybe seven, eight pounds, but yeah. yeah, I've never got an over ten pound scamp in many years out there. Yeah. A lot of you guys have. I've seen plenty of them. Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite fish that I've caught. Uh, sailfish, all the of that stuff, pretty far down the list compared to that fourteen pound scamp. Uh, now, a few of you guys answered this. This is a yellow eyed snapper. They're also called. Silk snapper. Yeah, yeah, there silk he is. Snapper. Put them on the spot. <laughs> Put them on the spot. Silk snapper, yellow eye snapper. Really good eating fish, and they are open all year long, unlike the red snapper. So you can put one of these on the deck. They're typically out much deeper, so you don't really run across these too often, right? No, I've seen them in the 200 to 220 foot range. Yeah, and the flying up two has been fishing out that deep quite a bit. Uh, especially this time of year with the uh, warm water. We're not really finding those gag grouper and, and scamp grouper and stuff like that until we're out there in the super deep water. So uh, that's where we're finding those scamps, those gags, and also those big amber jacks. So really, really cool area to get into those uh, unique fish like the yellow eyes, the silkies, and that kind of stuff. Now, we're going to get into the 39-hour stuff, the stuff this guy's been fishing for the last 60, really the last 16 years, yeah, <laughs> 15, but... 16 years, but the last 61 days straight. Uh, but I think before we do that, I think we need to uh, give away a free fishing trip. Oh, yeah. You want to give away a 39-hour? I've never been here for this. 39-hour uh, trip, it's coming up. Who won a 39-hour trip? Remember, in order to be eligible to win these free trips, you do have to have commented on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. So if you're watching on another Facebook page, if you're watching on one of the shared Facebook videos, you have to navigate to the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page and comment at least one time to be eligible to win. Now, we are going to see who won one of these free 39-hour fishing trips. We're gonna, we got another one to give away, too, guys, so don't be as scared. Rod, Rodney Schaffer? Rodney Schaffer. Schaefer. Schaefer? Uh, that could be wrong. <laughs> I think Schaefer has a C in it. Okay, yeah, okay. I think. At least my principal did. And I would know because I was in his <laughs> office there. a lot. <laughs> uh, but, all right, Rodney from Jacksonville, you just won a 39-hour trip. Now, don't go anywhere, guys. we still got another 39-hour trip to give away. Still got a 5-hour trip for two and a 10-hour trip for two. So we still got lots of free trips to give away here during our live stream show. Uh, but I wanted to keep you guys on your toes and give away one of those while we were uh, hanging out. Now, let's get into some of these 39-hour videos. We got some videos here from that 39-hour trip that I want to show you guys and uh, talk to Will about here. Got some AJ catching videos, some nice uh, amber jack at sunset. I'll hook one up. And no, um, this is I the older reel. Sound. Yeah, this is the older reel. He snapped a couple like that. All right, so explain what just happened there. Yeah, you could hear that. Where, where? 
and that's the older Daiwa setup. There's nothing wrong with it, but uh, if you do not have it set right, he will snap it sometimes. So when you lock that older setup, like a Daiwa 900H, big pen 9 out, even my 9 out does that. But I went out and I spent a little bit of money and got those. You can buy new drag washers. And those that you can do the same thing for the Daiwas. You can do the same thing for the pens. The old school reels, you can go out and online and buy these new school drag washers. It's really easy to pop the end cap off uh, or the side plate, they call it, and replace the drag washers. It makes, makes it a lot smoother. But that sound that we were just talking about, that that how did you say it? <laughs> that that drag sound that we just heard a turkey uh, call did you hear that sig, yeah. sig didn't like that he's barking now uh so that that drag not being smooth it was kind of jerky that's what breaks those fish off if you don't have it set right you want to back it down a little bit so that way it's a little bit smoother so you can't lock those reels down as well but let me rewind that so you guys can hear it again and you'll know what we're talking about here I'm just gonna catch one. I'll hook one up. <sighs> and then I talk through it. <laughs> That's a nice rod, though. It's acid wrapped, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, he did well. This guy did very well for the conditions. This is Louis Orenz. I think that's how he pronounced his name. He's in our uh, loyalty program, the Regulars Club. He comes fishing quite a bit. He does pretty well. Yeah, he probably hooked five or six amberjacks himself. I think he went home with one. But like if these were big fish, like you'll see here. That I'm pretty sure this is a big fish. And uh, you don't land all of them, especially things go wrong, you know. But see, yeah. he's up here. He doesn't have any people website? around. Oh, yeah. him. He's in a good spot to land this amberjack right here. They'll send it yeah, to you. those amberjack or them. these amberjack trips. We've only got 25 people on the opening day of amberjack season. Catch the fish. That's what's cool about the fish, this time of year. Don't catch the fish. We go from put, red snapper you know, season them. where we've got 40, <laughs> to 45, 50 people That's on the boat into down to 25. Got color on this fish. So yeah, they were able to spread out around the boat, and well, he, these big jacks are biting. Him, you want to be spread out around the boat. Uh, uh, it's about as much five of them following him. Get the free gap this way. Yeah, it was slick calm out there. There huh? were several oh, of them following him. The calm this had a little thing to do with the snapper bite. I feel like it was just slick calm out there. The snapper like a little chop. Deep color, deep color. The mangroves, color. especially he two to three does. foot. The mangroves bite a lot better. Even seven go. foot mangroves. Yeah, they do. Well. They will bite in rough weather. Yeah. I remember that one trip. I remember not too long ago. It was like twelve. They were calling twelve foot seas, and we went out there, and you guys you came in with right a huge here. catch. Yeah, I imagine that'll happen this winter too. You got a mango? And uh, the it's fish like the just bite good. Mango. They bite good in rough seas. Oh, it's your bait. I thought when it was a calm, mango at first. It can be too calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was hoping because I'm Always trying going to catch one boat. earlier. He's making a run. One of these jacks that came up had a few amber jacks with yeah, it. Yeah, you did. I, I knew you did. I could have free gaffed one, but it's I not fun. I thought you did for sure. That. I didn't. <laughs> you didn't try it this time? No. Uh, <laughs> five, six years ago, you would have tried it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would have gotten him then. But <laughs> He's coming around You're in your upper, death upper 30s. You've learned. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've got a glove on in this video. <laughs> crank, crank, crank. You got him if you crank. There's color. Nice Don't big old turn his head back toward the bottom. And That's this fish was the him. average fish for the trip cranking. right here, I would say. Steady a 40 plus pounder. You got him now. Yeah, I didn't see any small jacks really this trip. You got a couple nice small fish. jacks nice on the troll, which we're going to see here. We actually caught a lot of amber jacks trolling. Yeah. All right. Nice headshot. Oh, Oh, th that was a beautiful headshot right there. He's, that fish is dead right now. Yeah, it's done. Look at his fins. His fins. That was a perfect Good kill job, shot Will. with the gap. Good job, sir. All right. All right. Nice fish. So that was a good example of perfect gaff placement and also uh, finishing that fish off and being in the right spot with the right time, the right tackle. He had a big reel. He had big rod. He probably had a 100-pound test, huh? I think a 100-pound test. And yeah. for, and the one thing I noticed with him, he was using a really short leader. Yeah. That guy. 
And normally you use a long leader. Yeah, normally you use a long leader for Jax, but uh, some he was getting bites on the short leader. So, it, it, you know, sometimes it, things can change. And now normally for uh, Jax, how big of a leader would you recommend? I would say six foot to start with. You know? At least. Yeah, start at six feet. And, uh, that is a big Jack right there. For me, I like at least six foot, but I'll use more like a, there's Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I like a big, big leader for jacks. At least six foot, but more like even if I eight, if I have the room, eight, ten foot. Yeah, really he was up there on the bow. He could have been fishing a long leader right then. Yeah, you could get away with a long leader up on the bow right now for sure. I mean, it's this time of year, we don't have a lot of people on the boat. You have a lot of room. You have the chance to spread out. I think on the last Tuesday trip of Amber or the last Tuesday trip of August. Which let me pull up the calendar here, so I'm not wrong. Um, that's yeah. Tuesday, August twentieth. I think we only have like 15 people booked, so there's tons of room to catch these jacks, and also get plenty of room to land them too. Yeah, and the next Tuesday trip there was uh, that's 20s. Tuesday. It's in the twenties, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. Yeah, that's Tuesday, August thirteenth. So we have a Tuesday trip, August thirteenth. We have a Tuesday trip, August twentieth. Those are both light loads. We have got a there's... Friday trip, August 9th. It's only got like 27 on it. We've got a Friday trip, August 30th, with only about 25. Now, August 16th, that's a 44-hour. That's I pretty imagine, full. Yeah, I figured the 44-hour would full. fill up. Yeah, those and 44 hours. People love the 44 hours. Yeah, that'll give us more time to get up a little bit further up the line on those snappers at night. Now, Garrett was stroking these Amber Jacks. Some runs. Yeah, he was. That, that's Way the down. position right there. That is the power position. And he's Drop got the smooth his drag. Knees. He's got the smooth drag on that reel, too. Yeah, he put in the uh, put in the, the aftermarket drag on that Daiwa. That's a big old Daiwa. That's a 600 H, isn't it? Yeah, that's the bigger one. And that's not a 9 He's got that's a fish a six. That's I'll a 6 Yeah, so that's a 6 off. But he's got the aftermarket drag. He's got the Hubbard's Marina killer stick rod. He's that's one of our eight foot rods too. Garrett loves I'll take those his picture long, in just a long second. rods. Longer the rod, the more bend the rod has, the less you're fighting the fish, right? Yeah, you can let the rod bend, especially on those amber jacks. You know, yeah. A grouper, you kind of want to get on him right off the bat, but an amber jack, he's in a fight regardless. So you want to have the rod to do the work, that, you know, yeah. some of the work. Longer rod makes your life yeah, a lot yeah, easier. Look at here. that thing bend, man. Garrett is putting your line work. Up here, sir. Now, you'll notice he's got the rod on the rail, but notice the rod placement on the rail. That rod is right I say there. Jay's will. Some big amber jack passing by. Jason's got a big one, too. We got one on he's the got the rod right on the here. rail, but that rod is placed is. on the foam. Real Your important color. if you're going to put the rod on the rail that got you keep color that on this foam one. on you it, come right? over top of me, sir? Very, very You'll important. If you start doing it up there, it Over top, not only time. it's going to crack your fiberglass on the rod or crack the coating, but uh, it can break your rod. Yeah. They're all some big fish. So that was a little bit of a dance there, trying to get that line out of the way. Here comes Will with the gaff shot. I think he helps you pull this one in. Oh, yeah. Garrett's a madman. <laughs> he's, he's not going to let it, you gaff the fish by yourself. Oh, yeah. He gets another one in Hold this on. one. Garrett puts no, I got, the rod I got down and gaps it himself. I, right I did not get this one right in the head, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have to be opportunistic. Yeah. You, know? you want to just gaff what you can. Nice fish. It's easier nice to stick fish, them and keep that fish there instead of letting them long around and get tangled up, you know. Yeah, that's a 60 to 70 pound fish right there. That is a monster. Look at them all over the deck, too. They were biting right then. Like I said, we don't we don't land all the big jacks that we hook. We the average guy lands half of them probably. Garrett's fishing a short leader too. Oh yeah, Garrett likes the short leaders from what I hear. Nice fish. So try a little bit of both. You know, if you're not getting a bite on a longer leader. Oh yeah, look at that fish box. Yeah, there was big jacks out there, guys. Some Let me see if maybe I can get them. That's that's a nice little pile of jacks. And that's uh, daytime is when we catch those amberjack mainly. Yes, like and they started. He set us up just right on a spot where they were gonna bite at sunup, where you could uh, catch a few baits right before sunup, and then they were gonna bite as soon as the sun came up. 
Because those jacks, they like those big, big live baits. So a lot of times, the bait that you catch while you're out there, like those big porgies, porgies. they work really well. And we're getting, you know what we're getting out there right now is tinker mackerels, good sized tinker mackerels, Ooh. while we're fishing chicken rigs. Oh, and nice. uh, I, I don't think we fished any of those for the jacks this trip, but and that has got to be amberjack candy out there. Yeah, big mullet. We've we've been selling some live mullet there at the dock. The big mullet work. Our bait guy, Brian Harris, or Buka Harris, uh, loves catching those big mullet. Those big black mullet work well. Spade fish, big blue runners. What's some other good live uh, bait? Big pinfish. If you got time, go catch you a dozen big, big pinfish. Pin fish. <laughs> yeah, as big a pinfish as you can find. Uh, yeah. But uh, spade fish, yeah. Spade fish is my favorite amber jack bait. Uh, we might even be, you know, we might even have some spades before too long around the dock. I haven't been seeing them recently, but yeah. Uh, Brian fished our bait guy. Brian, he fished hard for those spade fish before this last trip. He really couldn't find them around the dock, but I've heard. Um, Courtney Campbell Causeway near those spans. I've heard that's where to catch the spade fish this time of year. Huh. So you never know. You can go out there and try it. Those big spade fish, they work well. Oh, now, Garrett brought his son, Rhett, out for this trip. Rhett's, how old do you think Rhett is? Maybe four and a half? Four. No, is he five? He's, he's I honestly five. Do it, Rhett. Oh, terrible at ages. <laughs> <laughs> terrible at ages. He's a kid. Yes, my kid come is doing on, four man. weeks, and uh, it. I'll know the age of my son, ride. but yeah, you can. Rhett is my cousin, can't and never I can tell anything. you how old he is. I can tell you he's a cool kid. There's your nephew. Do it, Rhett. Yeah, Do it, man. Yeah. Garrett's my cousin. <laughs> yeah. Cousin, nephew. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what my dad used to do. Try to help me reel and he crush my hand. <laughs> but this is, I want to show you this video not only because Brett's a cool kid catching this jack right here with his dad, but uh, also you're going to see those amber jack follow the He's other like one. like a fourth generation so this fisherman is pretty here. Pretty huh? interesting. A lot of Count times you see those jacks Paul. follow the other one up. Great they grandpa. Have, this might be where grandpa. I was messing with the, messing with the jack. No, I, this one, uh, if I, if I'm I watched it earlier, really, the jack just falls it up. But okay. When you see that start happening, you can catch those jacks as they follow them up by dropping another pin down the next four. to them, right? Or a jig the one. even right there. Yeah, a vertical yeah, jig right yeah. next to the one coming got up. Color, or color, a popper following. in this situation, you could throw a popper out there, maybe. Let's get over here where we're They're following. Now, those jacks, a lot of times, especially when it's so calm like this, I don't know if you guys saw that. I'm going to rewind it up See that other jack following? That comes the four. You carry the one. So we're gonna, we're gonna look over the side. You're gonna see that second jack. Oh, they're falling. See that second jack falling it. You can see it right there. That second jack's falling him up. And uh, these jacks do that a lot. A lot of times you catch one, you have one, two, three, falling it up. And that vertical jig dropped right underneath the one on the hook. Look at that. That second jack. Also, keeping the uh, pinfish. If you bring a lot of pinfish out there with you, you can keep them up on the surface. A lot of times what will happen is, especially those guys in those smaller boats, like the charter boats, to get, because on a party boat, we're kind of blessed. You got a lot of lines in the water, a lot of people. Some people view that as a downside, but to us, you get a lot of chum going in the water. Now, uh, on a smaller charter boat, a lot of times you can anchor up, or if you're going out there in your own boat, if you're watching this video and you don't go fishing with us, you'd rather fish in your own boat or your buddy's boat, you get anchored up over there, uh, over one of those big wrecks or one of those big springs, you can get anchored up and you can take those thread fins and start chopping them up into small pieces, chumming them up, throwing handfuls out, handfuls out, handfuls out, then cutting them in half and throwing those halves out, throwing those halves out, then just starting throwing whole thread fins out, throw a couple whole thread fins out. Those jacks are going to start coming up off that spring, off that wreck, up into the water column. And you can be vertical jigging. A couple buddies can be vertical jigging while you're doing that. And you're getting those jacks excited. They're starting to come up off the spring. And then you can take pinfish and you take a net full of pinfish and you slap it against the side of the boat. That's Disorient awesome. those pinfish and throw a net full of those pinfish overboard. Then those jacks really start coming up. So you're throwing net fulls of disoriented pinfish over. You're throwing a few whole thread fins over. You start to see those jacks come up. And once you start seeing them, then you're throwing net fulls of just non-disoriented, lively pinfish. Pin 
and those pinfish are gonna what's gonna finally raise those jacks to the surface. At that point, that's when you can start using those poppers. Yeah. I uh, this trip I saved a bunch of heads and tails for the jack spot just because it's not gonna they're not gonna eat them but it gets them curious coming yeah. around looking at the heads and tails and know? they'll they'll start coming up in the water column that's what makes it really easy to vertical jig them because when you're talking about a 40 50 60 pound amberjack you don't want to fight that thing out of 200 foot of water you might as well fight it out of 100 foot of water yeah you, you don't want to hook him on the up. bottom yeah you don't yeah. want to hook him on the bottom in 200 feet. Some people do. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> so when you're dropping down that big live bait, what I like doing is I'll look down and I'll drop that bait until I can't see it anymore. Once that bait starts to disappear, I know that bait's pretty far down, 60, 70, 80 foot of water, and I'll stop it with my thumb. My thumb is going to stop that reel from dropping that bait to bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll just barely let that reel just slowly drop that bait to bottom and the idea behind that is i'm fishing the upper part of that water column because the biggest jacks are always on the top or bottom of that school and yep. i'd rather catch that biggest jack at the top of the school that way i only have to fish them a third of the way or a quarter of the way or half the way from the bottom instead of fishing them all the way up from the bottom that does make a difference and a in a deep water scenario, yeah, you do not want to hook that fish on the bottom. There's a wreck down there on the bottom. A lot of times that he can get wrapped up in, you know. Yeah. And uh, much easier to fish him off the bottom. Heck yeah. Way easier to fish him halfway up or catch him three quarters of the way down instead of catching him all the way down on the bottom. Definitely crazy. Uh, why work hard when you can work smart, right? Yeah. It does <laughs> happen, though. Sometimes you'll be fishing for grouper and catch an amberjack, you know. Yeah. You never know. Mm-hmm. So I think it's time. We're going to shake things up a little bit. We're going to give away that five-hour half day for two. Five-hour half days are a great place to go out and catch your amberjack bait. <laughs> they are, a, that is one thing. I don't know if Dylan's ever mentioned. I had never mentioned this. This is this is a, kind of an insider secret, but go ahead, Wilbo. Uh, if you really want to come out on the 39-hour with some big jack baits, go on the half-day trip beforehand collect the the tom tates the grunts the small stuff people are throwing back and bring those on the 39 hour with you yeah because the 39 hour leaves at 3 p.m our half day trip is from 8 a.m to 1 p.m so you can go out on a half day trip and those fish that were thrown in the fish box and keeping for everybody else you can throw in your live well and you can transfer those fish over to the 39 hour trip and that gray snapper that everybody else is eating at the restaurant next door, you can take it out offshore on the 39-hour trip in your live well, and that puppy makes some good amberjack bait. And I caught my biggest gag on a half-day gray snapper, live half-day gray snapper. They are bad to the bone bait. So mm -hmm. the old half-day trip for two here, uh, I know we're talking all about amberjack, but it might turn into the biggest amberjack you've ever caught. <laughs> yeah, if you're coming down, you got the time. Go on the half day beforehand and catch you a few dozen baits, two dozen baits, you know. Yeah, we'll help you transfer them over. So let's see who won a five-hour trip for two on the five-hour half day. Barb Jones from Shawneetown, Illinois. Barb Jones from Shawneetown, Illinois. Keep in mind, guys, when you do get picked to win a uh, free trip, you do have to message the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page or shoot me an email to info at Hubbard's Marina uh, within about 10, 15 minutes. So that way I know you're watching live because we want to give those trips away to those of you who are watching live to make it fair for everybody who's sitting here watching live. So if Barb Jones is watching, make sure you message us at Hubbard's Marina and claim that free five hour half day for two people we still got a 10 hour all day for two and another free 39 hour trip to give away so make sure you stay tuned let's see here what else we got here in the video nice big old gag grouper that was a short video <laughs> uh i didn't know i didn't watch all these things today i was pretty busy today yeah let's see here what else we got we got old john martin now, John Martin, for those of you who don't know John, John goes out on our 39-hour trip. He's been fishing these 39-hour trips since before my grandfather 
uh, or before my father was running the company, my grandfather was still alive, John Martin. He is uh, in our regulars club. If you signed up tomorrow for our regulars club, you'd be re regulars yeah, club number out, like 5,200 and some. Um, John yeah, Martin is regulars yeah. club number 40. That's how long he's been official with us at Hubbard's yeah, we'll Marina. Longer than I've been alive, that's for sure. Nowadays, he acts as a fishing coach. So you can go out on a 39-hour trip. Not only do you have this gentleman well, I found a sitting next to me, Will, the 39-hour like expert best, as a it. first oh, mate, and uh, the captain, the crew, the galley cook. But John Martin is out there as your fishing coach. So when he was Will in the, he is just came in the wheelhouse when I was spots walking out. And the captain's busy, and uh, yeah. everybody's uh, busy. John really Martin point, is man. always there as well. So not only do you have two crew members, two captains, a galley cook, but you've also got John out there as a fishing coach. And obviously, as you can see from this video, he's yeah, busy fishing you, with you. But when the boat's moving around in between spots, when everybody yeah, else is taking only. breaks or moving the boat or pulling anchor, John Martin's there to help you out and be that uh, intermediate. So really cool little extra option we offer here at Hubbard's Marina. John also does a lot of our photos and videos. Most of these YouTube videos and uh, GoPro videos that we show are filmed by John Martin, if they're not filmed by the infamous and ever famous Bob Martin, Bob Harbison. So between Bob Harbison and John Martin, come on, Jason. Point no, this might be me. That was Jason, that's all. <laughs> uh, now, John there, you could see John's leader. That was about a six, maybe seven-foot leader. That was a longer leader. Definitely a longer is. leader. That looks like Jason's arm. That's how an old country boy does <laughs> it. Gonna show the face. Yeah. No, it was me. I'm pretty sure it was me. Is that you? We'll see. Oh, I see the glove. Oh, it was. <laughs> it was. It was Wilbo. <laughs> Flopping that thing around. Yes, sir. You missed the headshot there. But you had the GoPro. I'm Got proud him of one. You. Oh, yeah. Proud I of did you. set him up right there. He owes yeah. me one. John, you owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> Will had the GoPro running, set it up on the rail. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Might have missed the gaff shot, but you got the GoPro footage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pound it. <laughs> yes, sir. Here's a little shark video. Again, like we were mentioning before, some of the times when you're amberjack fishing, you do run across those sharks. Oh, I know that guy in the background. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who's the guy in the back there? He oh, told me not to mention his name. I believe name it's a shark. <laughs> we won't mention yeah. his name, but he does have nice gloves and boots. He does. He wears the best outfits. Best dressed 39 hour guest goes to <laughs> hey, Will, the unmentionables. We got a shark. Will Jason Shark? Big old Will shark Jason here, shark. guys. This is a nice little, uh, it's labeled lemon shark. I assume that's because someone yelled that. Yeah. Gold dusky. <laughs> or golden dusky. We thought it was a golden go dusky. <laughs> what the hell is a golden dusky? <laughs> you look more like you just made that up. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a boat term. <laughs> it's a boat <laughs> term. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's just so hard to identify these sharks. There he is. That is a big shark, though. Hey, I'll hold you by your ankles. You go down there and dehook. Oh man, that is a big old shark. Oh. Nice one for sure. And uh, those things, they fight, man. Those big old sharks. They do. Yeah, man. They'll 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 pull you over the side of the boat. That's for sure. Now this is an exciting video I wanted to show you guys. This is the trolling for jacks. So now this trip, you guys caught a bunch of jacks on the jack spot. And then after you were done with it, what you decided to go back over it? You didn't Tell me the story. Okay. We just we were. Knew there was more jacks there. It's a big ridge that runs around, but we didn't want to re-anchor on it. It was too close to re-anchor to try to catch those jacks again. So we're like, well, we'll spin around and, and uh, troll over it one time. And this guy's fishing with one of those Nomad. It's a Nomad. It's nomad all design. Baby. Yeah. This is the newest, latest, and greatest lures. These things, I, I saw it at iCast two years ago. I was like, that is a bad-ass lure. Yeah, I think they're going to outfish the Yozuris eventually. They definitely are more durable than the... Uh, now, you're talking not about... Not the Yozuris. You're the, talking uh, about the Rapalas. The Rapalas. Yeah. Rapala. They're definitely more durable than the Rapalas are. The Rapalas, sometimes you catch one or two fish on them, and they don't swim right anymore. But 
they were free. So now you just saw there another jack come up. This was another jack that was caught. This jack was caught. That looks like a Rapala over there. Those Rapala X wraps we sell in the shop, they work really, really well. We catch a lot of fish on those Rapala X wraps. That big 60, 70 pound log that we caught a few, a few trips ago was on a Rapala X wrap. But these new Nomad was an undersized jack. DTX minnows are the new latest and greatest. Is still a mystery. And they dive deeper than the Rapala X wraps they claim. And I think they do because we've seen it. They're a big lure. They, and the one thing I like about them a little bit more is they have big hooks on them. Big J hooks. Big J hooks, yeah. If you get that hook in the corner of a mouth of a fish, it's not coming out of there. You get closer, and yeah, they don't have the treble hooks like the Rapalos do. They have big J hooks on them. They look really, really good. I've been trying to get them in the shop. No mats are a little difficult. Uh, to get to purchase from you got to do a pretty big purchase from them so we're gonna uh, go down here clear from the Georgia. Georgia. We're gonna get some hey, in the hey. shop eventually but the repulls are just as effective if not more effective but there too, by the a couple of fish can tear <laughs> up not the just where it doesn't work as well and what Will's mentioning is basically they're uh, they're very longevity. Once you catch a couple of fish on that Rapala X wrap, it doesn't troll them. It doesn't want to go down anymore. It'll start skipping on your tang one thing, you know. And then at that point in time, there's not much you can do with it. Just get you another one. Of course, we have the omnipresent Jason. <laughs> Whereas those nomad design lures are pretty expensive too, but they they troll really nice and they're a lot more durable. And uh, they're new. They're new to the market. We don't have them in our shop. Bass Pro Shops carries them. Dogfish Tackle carries them. And uh, Hubbard Pro. I thought will it was a tuna. Soon. It's a jack. Yeah, a nice a jack. big jack. Now, honestly, this is probably the smallest one we caught this fish. This is kind of embarrassing. What the hell? Close your what the eyes, heck? <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to gaff them. <laughs> That was Will on the gap and Chase and said, that's teamwork right there, boys. Yes, sir. And this through one the is door. a keeper. <laughs> they put through the rod through the door. <laughs> 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 We're going to have to rewind that. We're going to have to rewind it. We're gonna have to rewind it. Let's see that again. Uh, the fish and the rod goes through the door. And by the door, I mean the gap between the rail and the wall. Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's re Ricka Ricka reverse. <laughs> now he's like, well, the only logical thing to do is put the rod through here, too. <laughs> that gentleman with the rod, Chris, he's a new customer to us at Alpha Marina. He had a great time out there. He caught a lot of big jag, or a lot of big jags. That's his wife over there in the black. She caught a lot of nice fish, too. They were good people. Chris, I'm sure you're watching. Yeah, he had a good time out there, and uh, him and his wife actually found us through these videos on our YouTube channel, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, we're glad to have them. They were a great crowd. Yeah, and uh, it was, they caught some nice fish, man, and uh, granted, our crew landed them in inventive ways, but... <laughs> <laughs> we hit that Jack is on the boat. <laughs> Jack made it in the box, baby. <laughs> So let's go through some of these 39-hour photos. Here's a big old porgy. That thing would have made some nice jack bait. Oh, yeah, that would have got a 100-pounder there. <laughs> Those porgies, they make some great jack bait, that's for sure. Nice. There's the DTX minnow that we were talking about. See those big old J-hooks on that lure? Other than the Rapala X-Wrap, the Rapala X-Wrap has those uh, treble hooks, whereas those DTX minnows have those J's. What is Jason holding up behind your hand? Oh, yeah, he's doing the rock and roll. So. The rock and roll. <laughs> there it is. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's a nice big old scamp, some nice gag action, some big old lamberjack. That was one of the ones where I said, sir, do you think it's a keeper or not? <laughs> <laughs> and he just brought it up like it wasn't nothing. Dude, just reeled him right in. Big old reel, big old tackle. Nice. Look at that mangrove. Oh, yeah, some nice mangroves. Yeah, we haven't been catching a ton of mangroves, but the mangroves we've been catching have been pretty quality. I feel like they're right around the corner, though. We're going to try some new mangrove grounds this weekend, I got a feeling, and uh, let's see. We'll talk more after this weekend's trip. I just can't get over this this photo. That is a 20-pound, 20.4-pound red snapper. Old Jig Head Ed, man, he's hardcore. He is, he's, As he was reeling that fish in, he said, this is the biggest fish on the boat. Yes, sir. He <laughs> called it, and he was right. 
Number one for a reason, Jig Head Ed, man. He catches some monsters. Yes, sir. He got Jack by Jack this trip, I think, too. Really? I, and I still didn't see what the weight was. Neither of us saw it, but it, it had to be 70 pounds for the big one. Yeah, it was a monster. Now, this Wahoo was caught by Bob Pappen. That's the gentleman on the right side of this photo. Jig Head Ed was just helping him hold it up because this thing came in green. Old Bob Pappen here on the right side is the gentleman who caught it. He was kind of new to trolling. He wasn't uh, as experienced as Jig Head Ed, who is on the left. Uh, so Bob Pappen got a new trolling rod right before this trip. Like, brand new trolling rod. He locked the drag down. Brand new trolling rod, <laughs> brand new trolling reel. Doesn't do a lot of trolling. And he had that drag locked down. So he landed this Wahoo pretty much green as they can get huh yeah i don't think it took any line <laughs> it, went, it went, ran into the back of the boat <laughs> green as can be and they gaffed it brought it over the rail it went nuts it took some doing took some kill uh kill shots with the kill pick <laughs> <laughs> to get it to chill out so they could hold it for the photo but monster wahoo there and that was on the rapala x wrap that was actually on um this lure right here we've got it we're gonna show you if i can hold it up for the camera right that oh there it is the rapala x rap magnum 30 that's the redhead white body that is the lure that caught this big old wahoo right here really really nice fish i mean they don't get much better than that no that's an excellent fish i caught one troll one actually one time on that same lure too red and white yeah, red head, right, white body. They really, really, really like those lures for some reason. Kingfish, too. Big old uh, predator kingfish and wahoo. They like those red head, white body Rapala X traps. Here's Lewis's big old uh, amberjack. Garrett. Oh, we're going backwards, aren't we? There we go. Nice, nice scamp. Oh, yeah. yeah We've been so picking nice. at the scamps. There's a. Uh... There's the old Andrew Campos from Southwest Florida. He got this big, massive, massive, massive. guy. How big was this guy? Uh, 40, almost 44 pounds. That is a monster freaking gag. And he got this gag on what I would equate to a kiddie pole. Yeah, I mean, I saw the rod and reel. He's left-handed. He's got a very tiny left-handed reel on a uh, slow-pitch rod. You know those When rods? I'm talking, I'm talking a reel that's the size of, smaller than an apple. Yeah, I, I held it before he caught the fish on it. And uh, yeah, tiny reel on a slow pitch rod, and you guys know you cannot put much pressure on a slow pitch rod. Yeah, and or it's just gonna break. And he got that sucker up, you know. That's what we were talking about earlier. Sometimes just some good luck. That is the definition of it, man. And somebody pulled and broke that fish off, and I was on the stern. And he comes around running around the boat. He's like, I just lost a big one. Is it is it floating up? And it came out from the back of the boat right then, and every, and the guys were like, "There's a giant gag right here." What? <laughs> yeah. And it had the jig hanging out of its mouth. I was just still. about to say because I saw the video where the jig was in its mouth. Yeah, the jig was still in the fish's mouth, broke off, floating across, floating what? away. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yo, are you kidding me? Yeah. So you're you're telling me this 44 pound gag grouper didn't get gaffed on the line no he somebody pulled this was a pretty cutthroat trip here and somebody cut that one this off. was a private charter trip they had about 40 people out all from south florida these guys were hardcore anglers they caught a massive pile of massive fish. like one of the biggest catches i've seen in a long time because they were all really good anglers but they were all real cutthroat. <laughs> Not necessarily, but this one happened to get cut off. Yes, yes. <laughs> so he got tangled up. Someone pulled, broke him off, and that fish came floating up in the back of the boat. And a second party had a jigging rod back there and snagged him with a, with another vertical jig. What? <laughs> yeah. You are you are lying no, right now. Long cast snagged him and uh, brought him back in. What? And then we so it floated it up. It floated up because of the barrel trauma, because of that. And 230 feet, yeah. <laughs> you were kidding me. Uh, uh And we had no, I didn't even see him fight it or anything. So I was, he came running back there, big fish, big fish. I was like, all right, whatever. And, and then they're like, guys, a giant gag. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so it floated up. Someone else casted a lure out, happened to snag the line, bring it to the boat, and you gaffed it? And you gaffed it, brought him on in. Dude, I didn't hear any of that. Oh, yeah. And when he snagged it, the fish dived down. And it was snagged good enough to where he was able to bring him back up again. Holy cow, It was man. crazy. It was a crazy story. That is a fish of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Some nice big mangroves. Some red grouper. There's old Wilbo. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some, through it. That was a long season. Look at his face. He's like, I want to be done with this. <laughs> <laughs> this red grouper. Yes, sir. Some nice fish from those 39-hour trips. We've had a really, really good red snapper season. We're catching some nice gags. The amberjack are open. We're catching some big amberjack. It is definitely time to get on out there and catch some fish. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. And also, we don't have a ton of trips in September, guys. So, y'all, if you want to get some fishing in, you got to get it in. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. During snap, during September. <laughs> uh, snap-timber. Snapper-timber. Uh, we have one of the boats out in dry dock. So, because of that, we don't have a lot of 39-hour trips. I think we only got one 39-hour trip in September. So... You don't have a lot of time to get those amberjack. You got August and then one trip in September and then you got October. So if you want to get some amberjack, get on those fish now. We got lots of light loads in the month of Am- in the month of August <laughs> to get on those amberjack. All right, so let's see uh, who won a 10-hour trip for two. We still got a 39-hour trip to give away here. We're gonna give away the 30, or uh, we're gonna give away the 10-hour all-day trip for two, and then we still got that last 39-hour trip to give away. So let's see who won a 10-hour all-day for two. This is a $180 value, almost $200 value, free trip. To Mr. Brad Turnow. Spadefish don't look like an angelfish. Oh, spadefish don't they look like an angelfish? Yes, sir, they do, Brad. They definitely, spadefish look a lot like an angelfish, but they look like a uh, a cross between a sheep's head and an angel, angelfish, right? Will, wouldn't you say? Uh, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll agree with that. <clears throat> All right, well, way to add a lot to what I said there, bud. <laughs> I'm not sure what an angelfish is, honestly. Really? Yes. An angelfish is like those pretty, like, coral leaf fish. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> That's why I said <laughs> That's, yes. He has no idea what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible explanation. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we still got one more 39-hour trip to give away, guys, so make sure you stay tuned. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time for questions tonight so i apologize here guys uh we've been talking a lot about fishing Mm -hmm. i enjoyed having you on the show well yes sir thanks for having me yeah we've been talking a lot about a lot of different cool stuff so let's see what kind of questions we got here tonight uh let's see here feel free if you guys asked a question that we missed feel free to ask it again in your comments and uh, we will get back to it now that we have a second. We still have one more 39 hour trip to give away. So make sure uh, you. Uh, I saw a question out there do jacks taste good? Something like, are jacks edible? Something along those lines. I saw one of those. That's what drives by. me crazy, bro. <laughs> it drives me crazy because anybody watching on the East Coast, like, more powery to you for living on the most terrible coast of florida <laughs> fishing just, wise i'm just kidding bottom, just, bottom fishing wise. yes yeah, just yeah. bottom fishing wise east coast has a great pelagic fishery way better than ours but as far as like grouper snapper on the bottom and amberjack the east coast of florida is terrible terrible you go out in the east coast of florida 10 20 30 miles you're out in 800 900 a thousand foot of waters in a lot of area whereas on our coast you go out a hundred miles and you're not in a thousand foot of water now that sounds really bad if you're pelagic fishing for marlin or sailfish or mahi but for grouper snapper or amberjack we have more bottom yeah and, plenty of bottom and more bottom means more nurseries 
more estuaries and more area for those fish to breed and live so we have a lot more grouper snapper and amberjack in our area also our amberjack don't have the coral reefs on the east coast of florida there's a lot of coral a lot of deep water a lot of loop currents a lot of nutrients and those fish eat a lot of those parrot fish and they get those worms on the west coast of florida we don't have the amberjack with worms i mean how many amberjacks have you filleted in your lifetime that have been really really wormy there's very 10 percent. yeah it, it, they've come in spurts but like this trip i didn't cut any major worms out of any amberjacks uh yeah maybe right in the t- back six inches of the tail on a 36 inch fillet yeah and that's, 30 inch fillet and that's what we find on the west coast of florida if if you you do find a really wormy amberjack the the worms are all on the very last maybe six to ten inches of that huge fillet from that 40 60 pound fish yeah but most amberjack aren't really that wormy and if they are wormy it's really just the very back 10 percent of that fillet so the the one thing that's different the the wolf see some almacos that are wormy over here and guys on the east coast tell me the opposite that they're not wormy over there but some of the almacos we catch over here are wormy but the amberjack's the biggest one i ever caught i caught a 106 pound one and it didn't have any worms in it at all 106 pound amberjack Mm -hmm. that is a monster amberjack so I see a good question here. One of the good questions I saw was, what is the best knot from tying my hook to my line? So if you go to hubbardsmarina.com, I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can get a little better view. If you go to hubbardsmarina.com and click fishing trips, once you scroll down under fishing trips, uh, you can scroll down to, um, I missed it. Fishing tips and tricks. It's somewhere. It was down there. It was down there. I saw it. There it is. Yeah, yeah. So under fishing trips, under the fishing trips tab, you scroll down to fishing tips and tricks. And under the fishing tips and tricks page, we've got a bunch of videos. We got a bunch of videos down towards the bottom of our videos. Uh, there's a lot of videos on here now. There's a how to tie a nail knot. The nail knot is hands down my favorite favorite knot if you're going out amberjack fishing if you're going out grouper fishing if you're going out offshore fishing at all you want to learn how to tie that nail knot is that not that that knot for me if i'm tying terminal tackle to a leader 99 percent of the time that's what that's, i use yes yeah, the only one i tie there we go snail well, knot for the double hook and then nail knot for the everything for the swivels. else yeah everything, everything else, else. I mean, essentially, if I'm not double snelling a hook, I use that nail knot. And for me, not tying 100 liters like this guy does for his 39-hour trips, for me, even the hook, I'm nail knotting. Garrett nail knots the bottom hook and then snails the top hook. Yeah, I used to do that, and I got lazy. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The snell knot's a lot faster. I mean, the nail knot's really fast, but if you're tying 100 liters, the snell knot's a little bit even faster and you rarely lose that bottom hook yeah but it the snail knot's not quite as strong as that nail knot that nail knot is hands down the toughest knot around mm-hmm. i love that nail knot so you can find it right there on our website if you want to learn how to tie it but great question uh let's see what kind of fishes do you catch in october uh definitely in october is gag sign I got a buddy that calls it Rocktober. Rocktober? <laughs> yeah. For getting rocked up from those gag grouper. Mm-hmm. October, November, December, great times for those gag grouper. Really from Thanksgiving to the end of the year is the best time for those gags. But uh, October, once it starts getting cold, all the way through the end of the year is a great time for those big old gag grouper. Uh, great time to catch some big old fish. What could you, oh, this is a good question. What could you do to pull fish when flipper or dolphins are around? So those mammals, those dolphins, what do you do to pull, pull fish around dolphins? There is a secret to that. And uh, a couple a ways to do it. Free spool. And a lot of times you'll bird's nest yourself that way. And then that's <laughs> over. But back to drag off. And once he doesn't feel any pressure on there, a lot of times he'll let that fish go. And then be prepared to slap it back in gear or tighten that drag real quick and crank as fast as you can. Sometimes he's going to grab it again. 
to repeat that process again and I would say two-thirds of the time you'll land that fish that way sometimes he will take it off but and we haven't been seeing much of that out there there's been a lot of uh, the spotted dolphins out there and they're more just around the boat eating the flying fish and uh, they don't maybe they make the dolphin sounds and will stop the fish from biting but they're not eating your fish when you're reeling them in generally but the bottlenose dolphins will hit a fish even a keeper sized grouper when you're yeah. reeling him in and that's a great that's exactly what i would have said when i get a dolphin uh a big bottlenose dolphin spinner dolphin spotted dolphin eat my fish free spool it immediately you got to really put your thumb on it even be willing to burn your thumb a little <laughs> bit but uh put your thumb on it flip it in free spool or back to drag off all the way so that way that dolphin doesn't feel any pressure and a whole lot of times spit that hook once he realizes that he's not messing you all the way up or screwing with you he'll spit that hook and then all of a sudden you're able to reel that fish in as quick as you can and if he doesn't grab it again you're lucky if he does repeat that process until you're able to get that fish away from him and then the biggest thing is run as far away and as fast as you can to try to get away from those dolphins because they're smart they'll follow you around oh yeah they follow us around sometimes oh yeah real it's, frustrating yeah especially at night uh, a good question I saw here was about dry dock. Every September from around the uh, the week of Memorial Day, so behind Memorial Day all the way to about the second or third week of October, we go to dry dock. So we take one of those big party boats and we pull it out of the water and we do a lot of work to it for Coast Guard and for our own preventative maintenance. This year it's the friendly fishermen going to dry dock, not the Florida fishermen. Florida Fisherman was in dry dock last year, so it's every other year each boat goes into dry dock. This year it's the Friendly, and the Friendly is getting a lot of work. We're rebuilding both engines, rebuilding both transmissions, spending probably Dang. close to a million dollars. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it sucks ass. But, uh, <laughs> uh, spend a lot of money to keep those boats running, keep them nice, keep them fresh for you guys, and also make sure they're in tip-top condition for our long-range trips and getting the most speed out of them possible. And um, because of that, we're going to have the Florida fishermen running all of our trips. That's why uh, we have a lot of half-day trips, and the 10-hour trips are on the hub. So you have a 10-hour party boat trip on a private charter boat for the cost of a party boat trip uh, from anywhere from October, or, uh, September 3rd, I think. Let me pull up the calendar so I'm not talking wrong. Yeah, maybe a little later than that. Yeah, it's, uh, no, I was right, oh, September yeah, hey. 3rd to October 10th. September 3rd to October 10th, we're going to have our 10-hour party boat trips on the hub. So you get a private charter trip for the cost of a party boat, same depth, same area as a 10-hour trip, but you're going on a private charter trip essentially, only up to 14 people, uh, same, same information. You can call us to book it. There is no discounts. 100% no discounts. It's $90 per person because essentially only 14 people can go on a private charter trip. It's really unique. But we're running the half-day trips on the Florida, and then we have that one 39-hour trip September 13th. That is on a full moon. So we couldn't pass up that full moon 39-hour option. We don't have a half day. It's Saturday, September 14th because of that 39-hour trip. Now, normally during dry dock, we just don't run any 39-hour trips. This is the first time in five years that we've had a 39-hour trip in dry dock. And that was because I saw that ha that full moon and I just couldn't pass it up. I, I popped in that 39-hour trip and I, I had to fight for this, guys. So don't make my dad right. Make me right. Book that 13th, that September 13th trip. Get out there with Will on that full moon in September and catch one of those big 50... 6.24 pound black grouper. That's when I call the Jack and my biggest grouper. Both of those really? in August, September range. There you go. And there's only there. one 39 hour trip in September. That's September 13th. So and make sure, you, again, make my dad wrong, make me right. Because <laughs> I had to fight for that 39 hour trip. So hopefully we have a good load of people on that trip. But uh, the rest of September, all, again, all half-day trips and uh, 10 hours on the hub. And then back in uh, the second weekend of October, we go back to normal with those 39-hour trips every weekend. 
Uh, we only got three more 39 hours in October. We got some Tuesday trips at the end of October. And then November, December rolls around. We got a lot of gag grouper trips lined yeah, up. Yeah, the gags get good in November and December. And uh, you just got to watch the weather. And, you know, if it's too bad, we cancel. You know, And if it's not, if it's fishable, then we'll head out and just take your Dramamine before you get out there. And the good fishing is in the rough, rough weather road. a lot of times. Yeah, the fish like the rough weather. And last last year in uh, December, the uh, the weather was pretty tough, but we had really really busy loads because we were slamming the gags mm-hmm. at the de- end of last year. So this year we've added twice as many thirty nine hour trips in December, and hopefully you'll get a chance to join us because we got f- we got two to three times more thirty nine hour trips in December this year than we did last year. So last year we only had one or two trips. This year I think we have four trips in December. Nice. Or maybe even five. So I really squeezed them in in December this year. So lots of options for you at the end of the year. Lots of great opportunities to get out there and catch some fish. I know we missed a ton of questions this uh, live show. Uh, Will did a really good job keeping me busy talking fishing. Um, I have to wake up super early tomorrow, so I'm not going to get through a lot of the questions tonight, but I promise over the next day or two, I'll go through all your comments and make sure I answer any questions you guys had. Don't forget to check. We still got a 39-hour trip to give away, so I'm going to start wrapping up here, guys, but don't click out of the the screen just quite yet. But uh, again, don't forget our Bass Pro Shop seminar is coming up August 10th. Uh, and we also have our uh, Fox 13 shows. We are on Fox 13 show, uh, News every Friday morning at 8.15 a.m. And then we also have the Barracuda Tackle Net Fish and Chill. Net Fish and Chill. That's an event coming up. If you go I'll to, be there. Yeah, Net Fish and Chill. It's a pretty, pretty awesome name. If you go to Hubbardsmarina.com, click Fish and Trips, and click Events. Go to our event page. You can find that Barracuda Tackle Net Fish and Chill event page. We're going to be giving away a free fishing trip every 30 minutes during this four-hour event. That's eight free fishing trips during this uh, four-hour event. They've got free vodka and free beer, so you know I'll be there. And uh, also, we're going to be hanging out with our buddies from Barracuda Tackle. And you know what's cool? Is Barracuda Tackle has some bad to the bone news coming out. I can't share it with you guys. I was I can't even share it with this guy. I didn't even tell I'll my tell wife. I'll tell everybody. I didn't even tell my wife. <laughs> this is crazy news. Barracuda Tackle has coming up. But I can tell you this. You know the D hookers that we use? Oh uh, yeah. That just drop fish off the hook that easy. Barracuda Tackle's got them. Oh, yeah. Oh, Barracuda, I've been waiting on them. Ba- Barracuda, I've been working hard. I told you two years ago when those things went out of business that I was going to find them. Barracuda Tackle's making them. Nice. And uh, Barracuda, Barracuda Tackle is going to get them in our shop here soon. They're going to be under a crazy name. You guys have to attend that event. Have a good time with Burton Young, myself, and uh, talk fishing. It's going to be a great time at Barracuda Tackle uh, at their uh, warehouse over in Pinellas Park. We're going to be giving away free trips, drinking beer, lots of vodka. You're going to be there, right? I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Smokey's going to be there. It's free vodka. Smokey will be there. And uh, we'll be we'll be having a good time out there. So Bass Pro Shops, August 10th. Barracuda uh, Net Fish and Chill, August 21st, I think it is. Yeah, August 21st, that's a Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then uh, every Friday morning, 8.15 a.m., we have that Fox 13 show. So make sure you tune in to one of those events. Again, go to hubbardsmarina.com, click Fishing Trips, and click Events. Let's see who won that 39-hour trip. You ready? I'm ready. Here we you, go. you got to get home, man. You, you're going on vacation tomorrow, uh, Yeah, dog. we're headed up to, to Steenhatchee tomorrow. There you go. He, he keeps saying Steenhatchee. <laughs> he said Steenhatchee right this time. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, please please make sure you pronounce that right when you go up there tomorrow. Them rednecks up there, they take it serious. Oh, no, yeah. I, <laughs> I fit in with rednecks, but... <laughs> you are a redneck, dog. <laughs> Oh, man, you're from uh, North Carolina, South Carolina? North Carolina. North Carolina, from the woods. When you came down, you had an accent. Uh, yeah, I've started to mellow out yeah, now. You, yeah. know. you got that Florida twang going now. 
But uh, definitely, let's see who won that 39-hour fishing trip. This is the second free 39-hour trip tonight. Who's going fishing with Will for free? That is Pete. How would you say that last name? Kettles. <laughs> Pete Kettles. All right. We're going to go with Pete Kettles. Kettles. Now, <laughs> Pete Kettles. From Newport Ritchie, Florida. Now, keep in mind, guys, these 39-hour trips, these 10 hours, these 5 hours, if you won, you got to message the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page or email us at info at Hubbard's Marina to claim them. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next Sunday night. We're going to do this again a week from today at 8.30 p.m. Yeah, cheers. 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 Yeah. Tonight it was uh, Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. Was Every, everybody idea. asks what we're drinking. It's Maker's Mark tonight because that's Will's favorite drink. I, I like my Jameson, but I, I drink to my crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. There you go. So we'll see you next Sunday night. Uh, next Sunday, I'm going to hope to try to wrangle Smokey back in here, but I got to take a day off when Smokey's in here. It's crazy. I can't even go to work the next day. So uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. He got it. See you later, guys. Bye, Have, a guys. Good... Yeah. Have a good night.